The following clip is from the North to South Show, live every Monday and Wednesday at 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, where we talk SEC football everything. Now, we'd love to have you out for next show, but for now, hit that like button down below, hit that subscribe button, and enjoy this clip. This, whose running back room is better, the Georgia Bulldogs running back room or the Texas A&M running back room? Because I mentioned it a bit earlier. I look at these two teams and their running back rooms, and I think that they're both right up there for top five, at least top ten in the nation in terms of running back room. The depth and everything that you see in both of these running back rooms, just the pure and talent, I think that you have probably maybe three, three first-rounders here. Again, that could be a bit of a stretch because the way that the NFL is kind of shifting towards drafting running backs in the first round is is really, really unlikely just because the running backs are becoming such a liability. But I think you look at some of the guys here, they will be at the top of your class. Maybe not first rounders, maybe second, third rounders, but they will be at the top of their draft class for sure. So again, breaking down some of the better running back rooms in off college football. I think Georgia and Texas A&M are up there. The reason why I'm not adding South Carolina into this and because they are an SEC team and everything, because obviously as a Gamecock fan, you see I got the jersey here, I got the baseball jersey in the back. I'm going to think that South Carolina, I'm going to be a bit biased towards South Carolina. Not to say that I think Kevin Harris and Marshawn Lloyd are better than what Georgia has and what Texas A&M has, but naturally I tended to towards South Carolina and saying that their running back room would be the best because I'm just really, really high on Kevin Harris and really high on Marshawn Lloyd, which I think still we have one of the better running back rooms too. But to eliminate that kind of bias, I'm taking two teams that I don't have any bias towards. I like both teams. In the sense that I think they both got talent in the rooms. Like, taking away the team. Yes, I know South Carolina and Georgia are rivals. But I think the pure talent and just the guys on this Georgia running back room, I can find myself to cheer for. And this A&M running back room as well. So, I just want to break down. I did. What I'm doing here is I took my top three players from each running back room. We're going to take a look at some of their stats from last season. How they performed and everything like that. Then we're going to kind of go through. I want to break down who I think is the best running back out of all six of these guys that I have here. So we're going to get into who the guys are a bit later. And then I'm just going to finish off with who do I actually think is better? Who will perform better this season? Because I think one of these teams, and you might be able to guess it already, is way better, way, way, way better set up to have a more successful and on paper stat-wise to have a more successful season with the rushing game than the other team, which we'll touch on later. But let's start off with the Georgia Bulldogs talking about them. So my three running backs I have for them, I took who I think are the three best running backs. Again, you could think completely differently, but I got Zamir White, obviously. At two, I got James Cook. And then three, I got Kendall Milton. Obviously, you could do McIntosh or you could do Edwards back there, which these stats that I'm about to tell you here are going to be a bit skewed because, of course, Kendall Milton, I think, only finished fifth in rushing for Georgia last season. I think Edwards and McIntosh both finished ahead of them. So if you look at the bottom guy and then I compare the bottom guy for Georgia, which is going to be Kendall Milton to the bottom guy of Texas A&M, obviously, it's going to look better for the A&M guy. But I... Just want to put that out there that Kendall Milton actually finished fifth overall in Georgia's running back room. And I think that he will have a big season for the Georgia Bulldogs this season behind Zamir White and James Cook. Look, Georgia's got five really, really solid running backs. So let's get into Zamir White's stats first. First, he had 144 rushing attempts for 779 yards, 11 touchdowns, and a 5.4 average per carry. You look at James Cook, 45 rushing attempts, 303 yards. Three touchdowns with the 6.7 yards per carry. And then Kendall, Kendall Milton only at 35 attempts, 193 yards with a 5.5 average. Georgia last season, we know especially at the beginning with the quarterback struggles and everything, they really, really, really relied on their ground game. And I think it worked for them. I think that this ground game really carried and made this offense at least what it was last season until JT Daniels finally got on the scene in Athens. Like, I take you to the Auburn game. That game was absolutely dominated by the rushing game, and especially the offensive line, too. Dominated on both sides of the ball, and Stetson Bennett didn't even throw the ball that much. Like, it wasn't like Stetson Bennett had some amazing game passing. He just did what he had to do in the passing game, and he just managed the game really, really well in the sense that Georgia could just rush the ball the whole time and Auburn had nothing on the offensive line. And you look at other games, like I remember when Georgia played South Carolina, rushing the ball, it was hard to tackle Zamir White. It was hard to get cooked down. There was so many... Georgia stacked at the rush, running back position, and I think they are RBU. Like they've, You look at the running backs that they've had in the past, going back to 
2014 where I remember Todd Gurley, Sony Michelle, Nick Chubb all being in the same room, and then you have DeAndre Swift, and now you got these guys, Amir White, James Cook, who is, I think he's a cousin, I could be wrong, cousin of uh, Dalvin Cook, or he's a brother of Dalvin Cook, I know that they are related though, who is one of, if not a top three running back in the NFL right now. So I think Georgia, their running back room is clearly top of the nation, 110%. And now let's move on to AM. So my top three guys for AM, I'm looking at obviously Isaiah Speller, who some people would say is the best running back in the nation, or even or alone say he's the best running back in the SEC. He had 188 rushes last year for 1,000. 36 yards, so he hit over that 1,000-yard mark. Nine touchdowns and a 5.5 average per carry last season. Isaiah Spiller's in the Heisman hunt right now. Like He's a guy that if you go onto any betting site, you're going to see Isaiah Spiller's name. It might not be the greatest odds because we know the Heisman definitely favors the quarterback. It might be plus 2,000 or something like that. But just as a running back, being in the Heisman conversation means that you're a real deal. So Isaiah Spiller, he's up there. Let's talk about a younger guy, Devon Atchin. 43 attempts last season, 364 yards, 4 touchdowns, and 8.5 average per carry. Of course, that average stands out to you, 8.5. I'm telling you, this kid is something special. I remember watching the Orange Bowl against North Carolina, and it took me a while to, because this was like the first time that I really, really noticed action as a running back. It was his big run. I'm pretty sure all Texas and have a and m fans know it. It was late in the game, and he just broke a couple tackles, rushed down the sideline, and the rest is history. Texas A&M wins that game. But I think that he is a real young stud that could have a huge breakout season, especially rushing the ball for AM because you might think, I've named Isaiah Spiller, I've named Atchin as my top two guys. Well, who am I missing at three? If you look at the rushing dynamic compared to the passing dynamic, you're going to know who's at my number three spot and why I have him at number three. At number three, I had Anaya Smith for Texas A&M. 49 attempts last season, 293 yards, four touchdowns, and six average per carry. Atchin rushed more for Anaya Smith last season. And Anaya Smith had way more rushes, or only six. He had six more attempts from him. But there's a huge but, and every single Texas A&M fan is going to know why there's a but on this. Anaya Smith led the Texas A&M Aggies in receiving last season. I love running backs who really play that versatile piece, and I think that that's a huge piece in college football nowadays, and really the NFL, because I look at my favorite NFL team, the Chicago Bears, we have David Montgomery, who's going to rush the ball more than Tariq Cohen, but Tariq Cohen is that faster guy. He's that pass catcher. He's that guy who can make plays out of the backfield. And I think Anaya Smith, honestly, I think I've heard at a spring for Texas A&M that he's taken a lot of wide receiver snaps or just really working on his receiving out of the backfield. So yes, your rushing stats aren't there, but when you can receive out of the backfield, you look at Christian McCaffrey, the best running back in all of college football. Uh, in all of the NFL right now, it's because he can receive out of the backfield. So when you have a three-headed monster back there with two guys that can really, really rush the ball well and then a pass catcher in the backfield that puts up some serious stats and is actually your leader on your team in receiving, and then I think Weidermeyer was next and I think it was Lane, you got something special back there. So now I want to talk about the best versus the best. So my best, I'm taking Zamir White and I'm taking Isaiah Spiller, obviously. Not to say that James Cook isn't anything special. Not to say that Atchin and Nia Smith aren't anything special. I think it's clear and obvious that Isaiah Spiller and Zamir White are going to be running back number one for both of these teams. Isaiah Spiller, I think his advantage over Zamir White, in my opinion, the physicality, I think, is just a bit more there. I love how his Isaiah Spiller finishes off all of his runs, that he really, really fights for those extra yards. But something I think Zamir White does really, really well is finding the holes, especially rushing up the middle, and he's just always has an eye or a taste for the open field. You always see him, you look at any of his highlights, you think that there's no chance that he gets open and he's able to rush it for 20-plus yards, but he does. Zamir White just has such a knack for finding the holes and just getting into open field, and that's where Georgia really, really likes Zamir White, and I think that's where he really, really comes down to and really makes him successful. I take Isaiah Spiller in this sense. I mean, the stats say I should take Isaiah Spiller, but I'm not only taking him because of that, because like Spiller did have 44 more rushes than Zamir White, but he Isaiah Spiller broke 1,000 yards. I think Isaiah Spiller is the nationally respected 
running back in all of college football. You look at like him, Brees Hall, Bijan Robinson are probably going to be your top three guys going into next season. Isaiah Spiller, I just like the physicality when he's there. There's just a lot I like about him. So I'm going to go Isaiah Spiller is the best out of those six guys. I'd give Zamir White number two. I wouldn't say I'm not going to go and rank all six of them, but I would have Isaiah Spiller one and then Zamir White as a close second. And then who do I think, what room do I think will perform better in total? Because it's a very interesting question because I think that right now on paper, if you ask me what's going to happen at the end of the season, Texas A&M's stats are going to look a lot better than Georgia's, and that's because of a bunch of different reasons. First of all, looking on the Texas A&M side of the ball, they have a new quarterback in Haynes King this year, freshman. Their offensive line isn't that good in pass protect right now, so you're really, really, really going to rely on your rushing game this season. So you're going to see way more rushes than you are passing for Texas A&M. Bottom line, bottom line for them. And then you look at Georgia. Georgia's been really, really good and dominant in the rushing game this season. But I think Munkin and I think that JT Daniels are really starting to air it out. Not to say that the rushing game is being put to the wayside, but I think that they're going to start passing the ball more, a lot more than you've seen in recent years. Because JT Daniels is one of the better quarterbacks in all of college football right now. So why not, if you have this star quarterback and you got a really good receiving core, why not chuck the ball around a couple more times instead of having to rush it every single time? So I think on paper, Texas A&M is going to be more successful in terms of the end of the season just because of their situation. But all in all, I think as a room, who would I take? Listen, I love the Georgia guys. I think the Georgia guys are all amazing running backs, and I think that they're all going to have a career outside of college football. But the A&M factor that... They have the two guys that can rush the ball up the middle. They can rush the ball to the outsides. And then you also have that versatility where you also have a very, very, very good pass catcher out of the backfield. Not to say that none of the Georgia guys are good out of the backfield catching, but when you have a guy who's leading your team and receiving out of the backfield and then you have a two-headed monster of guys who can really pound the ball up the middle, I think A&M is really, really, really in for a treat this season in the rushing game. If you have the same offensive line as you do last year, your offensive line is to be able to glue themselves back together and really work on getting experience and everything. Texas A&M's rushing game could be the best in the country. Again, that offensive line is going to be the big question mark. If Haynes King, I think that they really, really, really need to work the rushing game in just to get him more comfortable, of course, coming in for his first season as being the starter at Texas A&M. So all in all, I'm taking A&M as the better running back room, but both of these running back rooms are top five, top 10 running back rooms in the nation, 110%.